Okay, Jerry, here's a quick little video for you, uh, just to get across um, the nature of the tools that I would like to integrate into T-Rev. So basically, if I want to do anything with uh, a script, um, I can call up a menu, and this is an entirely customizable menu. So what I can do, for instance, is look at the, the dependencies for this particular script um, and graph them. So let's uh, see what they look like. Uh, and this basically automatically graphs all um, the various dependencies. So uh, here we have one particular view, uh, and this has been uh, live sort of uh, uh, drawn, and we can have a look here. This is a, a self-contained script, as you can see. They're, they're all within the behavior of this object. There are no external calls. So what you have here is... Um, not a, a layout, these are all separate components. I'll, I'll show you how they're going to be laid out uh, together at the moment. I just want to show you. So interacting uh, with uh, uh, these elements takes you to the script, um, as you can see. Um, there's also various ways of graphing this here, and again, another similar menu here, so I can choose the graph style instead of hierarchical, for instance. Um, this is a, a faster graphing algorithm. For instance, this one here, if I want to draw the graph of, uh, of this um, object, uh, drawing this here, um, you can see that basically there are three objects here. There's a, the development back script here, within a stack called open. A lot of scripts being called by a library here in the, 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 the script object library. And here is the bulk of the handlers here. So. If we were looking at here at the um, HP case condition handler here, um, you can see that that calls HP um, get case conditions, that's there, which in turn calls a variety of things, some of them being uh, script.prop, for instance, which is in another object. So here you get a, a quick overview of um, the, 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 the dependencies of a particular handler. This is a, a little bit more of a logical view. Um, it shows you, if you like, the sort of uh, top-down hierarchy in a more clear way, but it's not quite as uh, concise. And there are other ways of graphing these things without the objects and so forth. I don't want to go overboard on this particular graphing aspect. I just wanted to show you the, the complexity of the tools, really. Um, the main point I'm trying to make is that if you take um, this... Um, uh, script editor, which I'd like to use TREV for, uh, one of the minor tools is this script dependency graphing. Another set of tools, for instance, just a simple thing is for the script here, I've got the hierarchy of all the objects. So if you take uh, the behavior here, you've got basically I can uh, navigate to um, uh, anywhere in the hierarchy. Um, I can also uh, look at all the used library scripts, and I often, for instance, say, right, let's have a look at the um, Git library, and there are all the Git scripts, um, or let's have a look at the, um, uh, yeah, the uh, Graphis library, which was just one of the tools we were looking at here, and I start to navigate it often around like that. But other things I might want to do is, for instance, well, I've got a bunch of tools to do with menus, creating them from scripts. This is um, uh, a library managing menus that are currently in use and so forth, and I can add them to that dynamically. This is interesting. This is the history of a particular script. So, so we're looking at graphers here, um, and basically I can look at the, the history of the binary stack or the history of this particular script. So if we have a look at the script here, this takes a while um, because um, uh, this is uh, taking out the, the Git database. Um, and basically, basically redraws the entire history of that script going back to when it was first done. So you can see here, these are all the revisions going all the way back to here is just September 20, 2009. Many of these scripts actually go back 10, 15 years. So let's say we want to look at what changed uh, um, between there and now. We can have a look at that, compare it with now. Um, and we have here basically um, uh, 
a way of sort of looking at, you can see that the, the text here was changed, um, and that uh, there was a change here, and a change here, and you can quite easily see what the, the main changes are, and then if you want, you can uh, revert that script, or um, you can, you can do various things with it. So basically, uh, that's a bunch of stuff to do with uh, uh, history of scripts um, and the history of stacks. Um, here is something to do with the database because I'm turning all the scripts which are currently in the library into um, a database. Um, yeah, you can add things. Now the point about these tools is basically that they're, they can, anyone can author them incredibly easily. So if I take, for instance, this database menu here, the submenu, um, and by holding down the option key, I can, for instance, let's say we don't want this old one. I can um, uh, hold down the option key, navigate to this menu, and you can see that this is the handler that manages it. Now, um, let's say if I don't want that, if I just delete that, and let's put in um, a new divider here, and let's put in um, a new handler here for the database, which would be, um, let's say, some help what this is about. Um, menu uh, database help. Um, let's say answer. Oh, well, let's say uh, the URL HTTP slash slash www.org. Something like that. And then just save that script. And now basically you can see where were we, wherever we are, if we're on something like this. When we go to the database, you change the menu. And we do that, opens up the browser and goes to web source. Any case, this is a set of tools that's been just replacing the revolution or the galaxy menu for uh, all sorts of things you might want to manipulate uh, scripts for. Um, here, similarly, um, there's uh, tools for uh, manipulating the um, individual handlers. So, for instance, uh, this one here, I can display the handler. Let's say if we take the time on this one, this one might be a bit more appropriate. Um, I don't know if I've actually written about this handler or not. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, this one, for instance, um, I haven't uh, exported the handler, but let's uh, just do that. For instance, I can get all its nested dependencies um, uh, so that it becomes a standalone script. And if I want to graph this thing, uh, we can uh, see what that looks like. Um, now then, you can see this one's a little bit more um, complex. It's not very um, self-contained, basically. So there are a lot of different objects here, and it might be better to look at a more compact um, uh, version of this, potentially. Um, for instance, what would happen if I look at it like this? Yeah. So here you can see that there's a whole host of um, objects. Twitter, for some reason, is in here. Uh, that seems to have come from uh, the open plugins folder handler. Yeah. So um, I can start to examine the dependencies of this script now. And, you know, when I want to look at that handler, I'll look at it, and there it is. Um, okay, um, I think that will do for uh, uh, the video now. Uh, I just wanted to point out that you've got um, basically uh, here um, a whole bunch of tools and the main thing is like if I have a, um, a menu like this with um, extensive or very complex uh, set of tools that I want to add that manipulate basically this script object or this script or manipulate in here this handler, this particular handler, then uh, what um, can I, um, how can I use the plugin interface to do that as far as I know I'm extremely limited in my ability to plug in my tools into the interface because it's in a separate application.